Ah, okay. So, uh, this video is about genetic fingerprinting and I'm just trying to bring it into it. Oh, there we go. Uh, genetic fingerprinting, DNA fingerprinting. Technique developed by my absolute hero, uh, Alec Jeffries. Sir Alec Jeffries. Oh my goodness, what a nice guy. Anyway. He kind of sort of accidentally stumbled upon this in the way of all scientific discoveries. I mean, it was working with DNA, so, you know, it was only a matter of time before somebody worked it out. Um, and what he found uh, was that individuals seem to have a unique pattern uh, after electrophoresis of DNA fragments. Now, the bit of DNA that he was kind of looking at um, are what we call uh, short tandem repeats, or STRs. Now, if you think about your sort of your DNA, just draw a little molecule of DNA there. Ooh. That's tricky than it looks. I wish I'd not made it so long now. Anyway, there we go. Um, your DNA, as we know, contains genes. So, Anything in purple might be a gene. And they're pretty much the same from one person to another. So you know, my haemoglobin genes are pretty much the same as everybody else's haemoglobin genes. There might be a couple of base differences if I've got a bit of a mutation, but it's going to be pretty much the same. Um, and of course, within that gene, remember we've got introns and exons, so the exons are definitely, you know, going to be pretty much the same. In between the genes, we have these areas of uh, sort of, um, I don't like to call it junk, but it is junk DNA. And these are repeating base patterns. So say you had one that went uh, ATTC, it would ATTC, ATTC, and you might have three of those, you might have 20 of them. On your other chromosome, you'll have the same repeat, but you might have a different number of them. So you know, if I've got three repeats on one chromosome, I might have 16 on the, on the other chromosome. And, of course, that's what I pass on to my children. So, you know, one of mine might have inherited the 3 pattern from me or the 16 pattern from me. And then they'll have got a different pattern, say 5 and 10, 5 or 10 from their dad. So everybody's got a sort of a unique pattern of these. So the technique uh, actually involves cutting these uh, STRs with restriction enzymes. And again, there are there are a few available. These all cut at specific uh, sequences. and therefore produce fragments. Now I imagine that in real life that they use, you know, Eco R1 and then they use Hein 3 and then they use Mar1. So they're using different ones so that one person's genetic fingerprint would have a number of different fragments. I don't know that, I'm just making that up just think that's probably how it goes and probably they're not looking at different bits of junk DNA as well because you won't want to make a mistake with this especially not in America where they've got the death penalty you really won't want to be making mistakes with this so <coughs> you cut them with uh, restriction enzymes <coughs> and then of course our separation technique is gel electrophoresis
And what you get is a unique banding pattern for an individual. Not for identical twins, probably. With their DNA being identical. So you get a unique banding pattern for an individual. And the, the chances are vanishingly small that you would have the same DNA pattern as somebody else. So, uses. So it can fall, and I think it's, you know, it's not the only bit of evidence, but it's, um, it can be part of uh, evidence forensically. So I don't think you would um, ever be in a situation where you were sort of condemned on the basis of just DNA evidence. There would have to be other bits of evidence as well. Um, so forensically we're talking about identification that's of the uh, perpetrator, the criminal, and of course victims. We might be using it archaeologically. And now of course we've mapped the human genome. They're saying things like, you know, we can tell what sort of hair colour, eye colour uh, that person had. Um, we can use it for paternity testing. And that's because your STRs are inherited. And we can use it to establish family relationships. Um, so obviously here I'm talking about animals, so if we're using it for breeding programs, you know, you want to know that if you're going to mate your panda, you're not mating it with a sibling that you've borrowed from somewhere else. So, um, and of course for classification purposes, and we've watched quite a few little videos, didn't we, on their classification using DNA evidence and the where this start is with a DNA fingerprint. So let's just have a look at um, paternity testing because in, in forensics you're pretty much looking for an exact match. Um, so that's pretty easy evidence to deal with. Um, but let's just have a look at, it's part of the activity that uh, you've done in class. And we'll just look at one of these families of puppies. So this was the uh, idea that you're trying to sort out. You've got your mother and their puppies and you want to know who the father is. I'm kind of looking for a ruler now and failing to find him. Oh, thank you, Hannah. So, remember, these are these down side, these are the marker genes just to show the relative positions marker sort of DNA fragments. So, Puppy B has inherited that marker band from its mother. Puppy A has inherited this, but not from its mother. Its mother hasn't got it, so it must be from the father dog. All three puppies have inherited that uh, fragment from their mother, the mother's got it, and puppy A and C have got it, and then this one, not present in the mother, so this one must be from the father. This leaves us with these two fragments from the father, this thin band, this thicker band, so third from the top, and one, two, third from the bottom. So if we look at the father dogs now to try and identify who's who, we're looking for a father who has got this third marker from the top and 
the third marker from the bottom. So not far the one, he's not got that third marker from the top or the third marker from the bottom. Father five has got the bottom marker but not the top one. And he needs to have both because he needs to have passed on the top one to puppy A. Father six has the third one from the top and the third one from the bottom. So this dog is the father of these three puppies. Simple as that. So you're looking for what's the mother got, what the offspring got, everything else must be from the father. It's the only place that they can get it from. Um, ruler, absolutely invaluable. Do avail yourself of one before the exam.